so now if you actually think about what all we have done so we started with a simple common source and for a common source what is the output resistance r not r not okay so the gain you get was gm r not i mean and in fact for all the ota topologies that we considered the short circuit transconductance was gm of one transistor or a pair of transistors right it's a single stage ota so i'll just say the magnitude of the short circuit gm was a gm of a transistor so to increase the gain what have we done we have been trying to increase the output resistance and the first step we did was to put a cas code okay so again incrementally let's all, let's say these are all short what is the output resistance here let's say all transistors have same gm or not so this is going to be gm or not times or not so what is the gain we get okay and of course instead of doing this you can also do a folded cas code like we saw so now let us say i want to get a gain of gm or not cube what do you suggest we do we can put a triple cas code like this okay. and looks like we can keep doing this on and on so what do you think are we losing ha huh. so here what is the minimum output we can have one overdrive voltage assume all overdrives are same so here it is two overdrive here it is so that will be the problem right so let's say if we can uh, do something to increase the gain without compromising on the swing let's say we start let's say we do this cas code and on top we want to increase the gain but let's say you don't want to do this triple cas code let's say if we can do something else okay and for that i want you guys to look at the cas code this way so ideally let us say this is a current source okay incrementally let's say it's short let's say it's m2 let us say i apply a delta v change here at the drain what do you think will be the corresponding current that is drawn from here delta v is delta i by sorry other way around delta v by output resistance is r02 so at the output side if i change the voltage by delta v delta v by the output resistance so that's why it's not a good current source right if the current doesn't change irrespective of the voltage here it is a good current source output resistance is very large so now consider a cas code now again incrementally let's say this are all short this is m2 m4 so now i do the same experiment i apply delta v change what is delta i yeah what is it delta v by okay gm i mean i label the transistor so let's stick to it gm4 or not 4 okay so now let us say i look at this vd2 right increment in vd2 what do you think that is yeah why do how did you say that delta i times r not right i know that the incremental current here is delta i so this voltage is the incoming current times the resistance here which is r not 2 so that is delta i times r not 2 so this is basically delta v by gm4 r not so now you see that even if i make any change for at delta v the corresponding change that appears at the drain to source voltage of our main current source is reduced by the intrinsic gain of the cas code right so which means even if this changes a lot this voltage doesn't change a lot so which means the delta i will also be small right that is why this is a better current source i make a lot of change for delta v but still the corresponding delta i is small it's a better current source So now that begs a question. Let us say somehow I make V D T to be zero. That is incrementally doesn't change. Okay. So if I look at the complete 
e d2 it's some constant so if uh, incremental v d2 zero what can you say about delta i delta i must be zero so if delta i is zero what can you say about the output resistance right delta v by delta i so delta i zero right. looks like uh, logical thought process so let's see if we can do this so let me take this again So this is my VD2. Uh, let us say M2, M4. And first of all, this is VD2. What do you think is setting this voltage VD2? Uh, remember that this is going to carry some particular current, so that will fix the gate to source voltage. So whatever gate voltage you apply minus the VGS, that is what will be setting the drain voltage VD2. So I'll remark it here, VD2. Is set by the gate voltage VG4. Okay. Okay. So now our goal is to make sure that this voltage is constant always, right? So let us say I, you are in a lab. Okay. I gave you. Oops. You you are I mean you have access to measuring this voltage, and let us say you have a variable voltage source, so we can change this voltage to do whatever you want. I want, let us say, this voltage to be equal to a reference VRF. I want VD2 to be equal to VRF. So what would you do? If you are in lab, you can measure this and change this. What would you do? Yeah, I mean, in, just say in words, right? What would you do? Huh? Yeah, I mean, you guys know. I'm just trying to get it in English. Yeah, I mean, basically, you, first step is to compare these two guys, right? You will check if uh, VD2 is higher than VRF or less than VRF. So, let's say I do that. Yeah, let's come to that, right? So, I mean, in, in the lab, you are there. I find that this is the case. So, I, what do you do? You look at this and then go and change gate voltage, right? If you are there in lab, you can do this, but if you want to automate it in circuit, Let's see what we do. So let's say same thing. So I am basically comparing these two, and I have to do something here so that this is it. Hmm? So ideally, what do you want this voltage to be equal to? VRF. So what can you say about this voltage? Ideally, but this should be some gate voltage so that. It is appropriately biased, so the output is non-zero. Input is zero. What is the gain? Loosely speaking, what is a block that can give an infinite gain? Right. So you need to have an op-amp. I mean, anything gain with an infinite gain. That's all. Okay. So this guy has to be an op-amp. So let's quickly put that. So I'll make it here. So what I'm going to do is this. Let us say this is this is M2, I think. Yeah, M2, M4. I'm going to take this guy. The moment you have an op amp, what is the first thing you have to figure out? Negative yeah, you have to figure out the sign so that it is a negative feedback. So let's assume like this. So how do you find if it's a negative feedback or not? Yeah, let's say you break this feedback loop somewhere. Say I break it somewhere here. So let's say I go and increase this voltage. What happens to this voltage? Increases. So this increases. So what happens to the output? negative feedback okay and let's say we have an ideal op amp so this has an infinite gain so my vd2 is always going to be equal to this voltage so which means even if i go and make any delta v change here there is going to be no increment in this drain voltage so if i look at the transistor m2 
its gate voltage will be fixed to something its drain voltage is also fixed so the current is the current is a constant right so this is now an ideal current source okay so which means what can you say about the output resistance the output resistance will be infinite okay again this is if we have an ideal op amp okay but of course we don't have an ideal op amp so let's see what will happen so let me redraw the same thing or i'll copy this maybe so let's say this guy has a gain of a let's find out what will happen to the output resistance okay let me erase all these arrows So if you want to find the small signal, so what happens to this guy? That's a short. So now you see from here to here we have a gain of a or minus a, minus a, right? So again, for simplicity, I'll just replace it like this. We have a gain of minus a. That's all you want. So I have. right so now i mean you can go and compute what is the uh, output resistance but i will take a shortcut so what i'll do is i mean what i'll do is this so let us say you have a normal cascode okay again incrementally vb2 is also ground i will not show that it's a normal cascode what is the output resistance gm4 r04 r02 great now let us say uh, this voltage is some vx what is the incremental current in m4 minus vx to gm4 yeah okay gm4 times vgs right fine if i do the same thing here okay here i called it vd2 let's rename this guy to vx what is the incremental current that flows here Okay, our first. What is this voltage now? Gate voltage. So, what is the incremental current that flows? I mean, gate to source voltage is what now? I mean, here the gate to source voltage was minus V X. Here the gate to source voltage is. Yeah. So it's going to be minus. Let us say A plus one times. Fine. So now. if you make this observation here we had gm4 that has become a plus 1 times gm4 so here if the if this is the output resistance what do you think the output resistance is here basically i mean loosely speaking i will go and replace gm4 with a plus 1 gm4 little bit of hand waving but it's okay so there is this guy okay so my r out is going to be what approximately i mean if there is normal cascode we would have had gm4 r04 r02 but now i find that gm is boosted by this factor a plus 1 and again for practical purpose i'll approximate as it okay so now let us say apply an increment vi here and measure v out here what is v out by vi yeah i mean okay check the signs uh, it will be minus gm2 if you find the short circuit gm here it's going to be minus gm2 again same thing right we have this transistor m2 converting the voltage to a current so the short circuit transconductance is going to be minus gm2 times the output resistance you computed so hmm? so yeah i mean if you ha didn't have this uh, whatever right this gain a the gain would have been just gm2 r02 times gm4 r04 now with this gain a the output i mean the overall gain also has increased by that factor 
and again loosely speaking right i mean not loosely speaking let us say you have a case like this let's say drain is incrementally short for now what do you think is the incre uh, looking in resistance now again use whatever we did yeah it will be approximately 1 by a times gm okay again same thing as here if you just had this it would be gm now this gain amplifier a will boost the gm by that factor okay so again you uh, come to a new circuit what is, what is the first thing you should do name the circuit okay so this is called uh, gain boosted cascode or sometimes gm boosted cascode the main idea is to somehow make sure that the incremental voltage here is zero that's all good so now let's see how will be imp implement this because okay, let me draw this once okay, it's okay m2 okay other way around so now what we have incrementally is this this is what we want so now i mean how do you think what is the simplest thing that can realize this gain a simplest circuit common, common source single input single output common source is the best thing so let's try to put that let me push it here and make space so i have the same old this guys <coughs> m2 m4 normal cascode i am going to connect a common source between these two points okay so input is the gate right output is the drain right? goes to bias this guy let's say i put a current source here so that this guy carries a particular bias current right? so let's say this is m10 this fine so what is the gain that is being realized by this block yeah okay let's worry ignore the signs let us say what is this gm10 or not okay so what is the output resistance again if you don't if you didn't have this gain it's a normal cascode firstly what is the output resistance for the normal cascode gm4 r04 times r02 but now what what happens to the output resistance that gets boosted by this gain which is gm10 r10 okay so if i find the small signal gain applying v in here and taking v out here what will that be i it's minus gm2 times this output resistance ro okay now i mean uh, this might be of the order of what now yeah it will become gm r not the whole q okay because with normal cascode it was gm r not square now that gain is going to be boosted by the gain of this common source this is also giving you a factor of gm r not so overall it is like gm r not q okay but let's not get very excited because remember i could also have gotten this uh, gm r not q gain by having a triple cascode but what was the drawback with this the swing here was three times the overdrive of i mean three overdrive voltages so let's make sure if uh, this is doing any better let me redraw the circuit once again okay okay m2 m4 we need to have this much space hmm. 
so the common source comes here okay say it's m10 yeah so let's find out what is the minimum the output here can go <coughs> what is the minimum the output can go for this overdrive and what about this voltage ah it cannot go as low as the overdrive of this because we need to make sure this transistor is on right if you try to keep this equal to an overdrive voltage of this transistor this might never turn on is that clear so what is the minimum output i can go let me hold on yeah the out minimum is is this point clear if i didn't have this connection then it was okay in a normal cas code i could have gone as low as overdrive voltage of that but the moment i make connect this drain to the gate that cannot be as small as an overdrive voltage i need to have a sufficient vgs across this so that this turns on <coughs> so what is the minimum output i can go huh overdrive of m4 again i'll not write the currents but remember in the exams when i ask write the currents okay here for simplicity i'm not writing plus vgs of m10 huh? yeah vgs 10 right i mean it's 10 okay vgs 10 and nominally we would have wanted to be equal to overdrive of 4 plus say overdrive of some transistor but this is greater than that sorry smaller than that sorry yeah i want to show it so it's not great and if you think about it the main problem is stemming because this voltage cannot go really low if that goes really low the this is the input to a common source and the mos doesn't turn on for very small voltages so what can you uh, can you suggest something pmos you can use a pmos because you know pmos is very happy if the gate sees a small input it sufficiently turns on so let's try to put a pmos so, but if uh, uh, this 10 mm -hmm. then 10 to the power also go to some minimum region also right we do not know the gate of m2 yeah we can see this is under your control so assumption is you are free to apply any voltage here so you apply appropriately right mm -hmm. so let's the suggestion is to use a pmos let's see what happens so again same thing i'm going to put a pmos common source so the output has to be connected to this point okay let me label this So now this voltage can go as low as one overdrive voltage. This PMOS is happy. So you might want to keep this as low as say overdrive of two. So what would be this gate voltage? Remember, remember that we'll have a particular current flowing into the transistor M4. So which means, yeah, it will be one gate. Uh, vgs higher right so it is overdrive of 2 is okay because again vgs is fixed because finally you will be biasing it with a particular current gate source is fixed so if you try to bring this as low as overdrive 2 this has to be this voltage okay but now you look at it this is the gate voltage for the pmos this is the drain for the pmos now i find that the drain voltage of the pmos is vgs4 and the gate voltage for the pmos is just this so the drain seems to be one vgs higher than the gate is it good or bad right remember i want to make sure this is this can uh, maximum it can goes the gate voltage plus mod vth10 right so unless you have a weird case where this voltage is smaller than the threshold 
it will not happen so very likely this might go out of uh, saturation okay so now you see you have uh, two scenarios in the first case i see that the nmos has issues connecting the input whereas pmos has no issues in connecting the input whereas pmos has issues in connecting the output here but with the nmos we will not have this issue right so what, what can you do yeah i mean this is the analogy i use every time ha ah, okay interesting one i mean the analogy I, every time i give is say you are rohit sharma you find that uh, you know uh, bumrah is bowling the first 10 overs really good last 10 overs really bad say shami is bowling last 10 overs really bad first 10 overs really good what do you do yeah make the one guy bowl first 10 other guy bowl the last 10 something similar so we have to use both of them okay so you have to use which which might be connected at the input now pmos is fine at the input side so this i can't go and connect it directly so this has to be given to an nmos and then nmos should connect the output okay so as i suggested we'll put a cache code uh, what will happen is this m2 m4 so the input is going to be pmos okay from here i will give the current to nmos like this okay okay what uh, what configuration is this actually it's a folded cache code remember i have a common source formed by this guy that current is given to a common gate formed by the nmos and that i have connected with this okay so here if i see i connect a low voltage to the pmos it is very happy okay and the high voltage to the nmos it is happy because drain here can go higher okay so let us say now i label this m10 m12 so what is the gain of this guy now this is the amplifier right right what is the gain i have remember the input to the amplifier is this so we have only one common source stage so the gm is provided by gm10 so it's going to be minus gm10 or let's say magnitude of the gain this gm10 times what is the output resistance here let's say we have an ideal current source here so don't worry so looking down what do you have this is a cache code so which means what is the output resistance gm12 okay so the gain here is already of the order of gm r not square right this is the magnitude of the gain so if i find the final small signal gain by applying the v in here and take out v out here so what will that be so what is the i mean if i apply the input here what is contributing to the gm gm2 so we'll have say minus gm2 times the output resistance right okay or maybe i'll move to an next page so that it's clear let me draw the circuit once i'll draw the same thing again so this is the normal cache code right so we decided to improve the output resistance of this so we want to put a amplifier here and that amplifier itself is a folded cache code okay so this is the pmos common source that i'll give it to an nmos common gate and then go and connect it and for biasing purposes you need two current sources okay 
so i think this was m10 m12 and this guy was realizing a gain of minus or say gm10 okay so first what is the output resistance yeah this gain a times gm4 r04 r02 so if i apply v in here and take v out here what is this minus gm2 into r out okay so the gain is of the order of what is the power i'll have 4 with a normal cas code without doing this gain boosting you would have had gm r not square now the gain itself the gain additional gain that we are adding is having a gain of the order of gm r not square so the overall gain is gm r not power 4 so basically you are getting this gain without compromising a lot on the swing limit right so i'll give it as an exercise for you to work out the swing limit i'll put as a practice set so now remember this is the single ended structure now we can basically form the differential amplifier i'll just draw it and we'll wrap up so this is okay this circuit is clear it's essentially a normal cas code where the output resistance here is boosted by adding a gain here okay so with this i'll try to form a differential circuit so i have common source but a differential amplifier okay usually i would have had just a cas code like this or maybe So now I am supposed to put an amplifier between these two points and we saw the folded cascode is a good choice there. So we have a PMOS input and that current is given to an NMOS stage. And for biasing purposes I will have two current sources here. Same thing should come here also. So there again we will have a folded cas code arrangement. So this goes here. Now remember this is only one half. What will happen at the top? I mean usually in a normal cas code, uh, upper side will also be a cas code, right? So it will be PMOS cas code. It's not very neat, but I think it should convey the point. But if I leave it like this, is it okay? Why? Yeah, here I have boosted the resistance looking down, but looking up, it is still the same old cas code. So that's not going to work, right? So what should I do? I should do the same gain boosting for the PMOS cas code also, right? So maybe I can beautify this. Let me draw it neatly. So I should go and put an amplifier, I will flip the transistors, just a second, so I have to go and put an amplifier here like this, okay. Here also I will go and put an amplifier like this with a gain of minus A and what kind of amplifier do you think this might be? It should be another cas code, folder cas code will be better. So here I used an uh, PMOS input folder cas code. So what do you think might be a better choice here? Right? Again because this voltage you want it to be as slow as possible 
So PMOS was a better choice, so that it turns on nicely. <laughs> Here you want the voltage to be as close to VDD, so which means having an NMOS is good because the gate sees a higher voltage. So these guys must be, write it like this, an NMOS input, hold it casco. So okay, one last thing, let's uh, incrementally this all are grounded, let's see. So, what do you think, how do you think we will realize this current source? First of all, NMOS or a PMOS? PMOS. But if I do a normal current source, is it fine? Like this? Is it okay? Why not? Why or why not? Which one? Yeah. So, looking down, what is the resistance we have? Remember, this is providing a gain for you and uh, ideally you want this to provide a gain like a cascode. So looking down, we have a cascode, but looking up, so you will be limited by this guy now. So what do you do? You have to put a cascode there also. Okay. So same way, uh, this side also you need to have a cascode. So what about this current source? First of all, it's NMOS or PMOS? NMOS. So do we need a cascode or normal current source is okay there? Yeah, why? I mean, again, at this point you see the impedance it sees is just R0. Yeah, here I looking up is just R0. So here also it's okay to have R0. I mean, you can put a cascode here, but it's not of any use, right? Because you'll be limited by the R0 of this guy. So similarly, this is what will happen here. Okay. So I mean, as you see, uh, I mean, even now there are so much of transistors, right? And if I actually put the schematic of this, it's going to blow up. In addition, if I show the biasing circuit that we saw in the last class, it might look so big. But if you understand what each guy is doing, you will be able to break it down, right? So you, you know why this is a cascode, because you want to have a higher output resistance for this guy. Similarly, you know what is this guy doing, right? That's why I'm saying there is no point in by hearting circuits, right? Should understand what each transistor is doing in a particular circuit. Once you do that, it all becomes simple. This might look very big, but the moment you understand it, you know, this is a plain old differential amplifier with all the other, you know, cosmetics to boost the gain. And see, okay, here we have boosted the uh, output resistance for a normal cascode, right? That is, I have taken a normal cascode and to boost the output resistance, I went ahead and put an amplifier here. But remember, I can also make a folded cascode. I can boost the output resistance of this folded cascode also, right? So you can basically go and put an amplifier like this here and boost it. Understand? I mean, the idea is to make sure that we have a better cascode. We, I uh, showed an example with a normal cascode. We can do the same thing for a folded cascode also, right? So you guys take it as an exercise and try to draw the schematic. Uh, basically, do gain boosting. for folded cascode. So you start with the same way we did here, right? You start with a two transistor structure. Yeah, you start with a two transistor structure like this and then see how we should connect the amplifier and then you will get the circuit and then you see what is a better choice for this amplifier, right? The same way we argued about the swing limits and what kind of voltages are good for what transistor. You try to argue the same way for the folded cascode and see what kind of amplifier is good and try to draw the schema. Okay. So that will give you a better practice, right? That way you will understand what you are doing, right? Okay. So yeah, thanks. Let's stop here.